Hi, I'm Ashy, and today I'm going to paint what I hope is a beautiful bright red covered bridge sitting amongst a bunch of fall trees. So yellows and browns and warm greens and reds. So I don't know about you, but I do like fall. I live in North Texas. We get a little bit of color changing, usually very late in the season because summer's very long here. It's Nothing like what I've seen of pictures of the Northeast though with the trees and the color changes. So someday I hope to travel there during fall and see all of that for myself. But for now, I will be satisfied with painting based off reference photos from it. Do you have a favorite season? If so, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear it. And just kind of what is your favorite part of fall? For me, um, I like the changing weather. I like scarves and wearing jackets again. So let's just jump in and start to paint the covered bridge amongst all of the fall trees. So I'm gonna start by opening my stretched canvas and then I'm just gonna get the basic sketch in for my fall landscape painting. And so what this is gonna be is it's gonna be a covered bridge and you're gonna kind of see the path coming up to the covered bridge. And then it's gonna be a fall landscape with all sorts of trees around it. So let's start with just the basic shape of the covered bridge and figure out kind of where I want it to be. So put it basically right in the middle here and then come out to the side. And I'm just drawing basic shapes here. So here's just a triangle for the top of it. And this is all gonna be covered with acrylic paint and acrylic is pretty opaque. So I'm not super worried about the pencil lines. Cause it will be covered after. Okay, and then Kind of have this little, I don't know what it's called, but the roof is kind of thick. And then there's a top part here that has slats of wood. We'll kind of put that in and then we'll get in the side of the bridge here. Now let's go back from here and get the perspective of the bridge. So I'm about right here and I am using a reference photo. So that's where I'm, I'm getting this from a reference photo off Pinterest.
Now I'm just gonna rough in some trees just to get a basic idea of where I want some of them. So I know that I want a decently large one here. I'm just gonna kind of come up straight and it's gonna come up to above there. That one's an evergreen. It's pretty straight up and down. And then we'll put another one over here. And this one is, uh, I think it's called deciduous when it changes colors. And this one's a great big tree. And we'll have it kind of branching off. So to get kind of the branching off look, just doing these Y's so, and getting smaller each time. So they're kind of coming off in a Y and then they're getting smaller and smaller. And then they can just kind of go off the edge of the page there. Okay, and then there's going to be a bunch of trees in the background, but these are kind of my two mid-ground trees that I want to be most prominent. And then there's just gonna be a bunch of like smaller trees around here. None are gonna be in front of the fence though. They all kind of come up from behind. A bunch of little smaller ones, which I'm not gonna draw in. I will just paint them in. And back here is gonna be like an area that is the brightest. So there's going to be like the brightest bright here and then the darkest dark is going to be wherever it's shaded under the covered bridge. So we have that. I think I want to make this a little bit more prominent. Let's make that bigger. So we can come up here and just make it steeper. Okay, I think that that's the basic kind of roughed in shapes. Probably more than I needed, but just to kind of get a picture down. And now I can go ahead and paint it. Okay, so I have of various mix matched paints. Mm, the only one that's higher quality is my black. I have a Winsor & Newton um, black acrylic. The rest are Artist Loft and Master Touch, which are not the highest quality, but they get the job done. And I'm not a professional artist. I'm not selling these. I'm just keeping them. So just um, doing it for myself. Don't really care that it's not the highest quality. So I'm gonna start by getting in kind of an underpainting layer. And I personally like to make my underpainting like really watery. And then I um, am gonna use actually gold and it is shimmery, shiny. And that's going to give it kind of a glowing effect. I 
mean, in reality, this layer is going to be covered, but by starting with that kind of glowy gold, it'll just give it that um, undertone, basically. So just get a ton of water. Now I do have a video also on how much water you can add to acrylic paint. Um, now the video kind of reviews a study that was actually done by a paint company, um, which probably I would say has higher quality paints than I'm using. So it's probably a little bit better and holds up better even when you add a bunch of water. But basically what it found was it doesn't really matter how much water you add. You're not really gonna ruin the integrity of the paint. Now, if you're trying to make something that's gonna last for generations and gonna go through a lot of um, abuse, I guess, then maybe it matters more. But for the most part, for general use, it doesn't really matter how much water you add to your acrylic paints. Now, if you are worried about it, there's mediums and stuff that you can use to make your paint thinner and looser. Um, so again, if you're worried about it, you can use that. I just use water because I'm not too worried about it. I don't think I'm creating masterpieces that are gonna go in a museum. And if I do, they can probably be restored. So again, just not that worried about it. And I'm just kind of getting this shimmery gold under painting layer on the whole canvas, including the sides. Um, I like to wrap whatever painting I'm doing around the sides of my canvas. Um, you don't have to, you can just leave it raw, paint it a solid light color like black or whatever, but I just um, wrap my painting around it. So for this one, I'll be doing um, the kind of fall foliage around the edges. I think that the amount of water that I use made it kind of easy for me to go to watercolor painting. Um, I've seen people talk about how going from acrylic to watercolor is hard because you're adding so much water and just not used to that. But I always have added a ton of water to my acrylic paints, so I didn't find that weird at all to <laughs> add water to the watercolor pigments. Okay. So now I just have to let that dry and then I can start on the painting itself. This is fairly dry and I'm gonna start with kind of the background. So when I'm painting acrylic, I work my way basically from back to front and um, because it's opaque, you can build up those layers over each other and not see the underneath layers. Um, I mean, you can make the paint thinner so that you see them, but you can make it really thick and completely cover those underneath layers. So I just start at the back and work my way forward. I find it easiest. Then I'm not like going around things. Um, that was probably the hardest thing for me when I switched to watercolor is because it's so transparent, you don't work in the same way. and you have to go around, you know, your main subjects sometimes. And that was kind of my most intimidating part when I was starting um, watercolor painting was, oh, do I have a steady enough hand to kind of go around? Um, and I'm getting better at that. I wouldn't say I'm good at it still, but I'm getting better. But with this, like I can go right over my bridge cause it's gonna be an opaque color that I'm gonna put on top of that. So I just mixed up a little bit of the gold, some yellow and some yellow ochre um, to get kind of a really warm, a little bit glowy um, fall foliage color here. And I'm just gonna kind of dab that color in around the background 
and then I just mixed up some more. It's a slightly different shade, but same idea. Just gonna dab that in in the background. And I'm doing kind of a dabbing motion because I want it to look textured, not all smooth and perfect. And if there's a little bit of the gold under layer going or showing through, I am completely fine with that. And then I'll just build up. I am kind of starting with my lightest, brightest color here, the, the yellow. And I'll build up and get the rest of the fall foliage colors with those oranges and reds and um, browns. Now, um, acrylic paint is permanent. So if you are painting and don't want to get it on your clothes and stuff, you might want to wear an apron. Um, I probably should be wearing something because I actually do kind of care about this sweater, but I'm not. <laughs> I just will try to be careful. We'll see what happens. If you do get it on clothes or something, um, you can, if you wash it right away before it is dry, then it does come out. But if it dries, you're kind of out of luck. I've seen some different options for trying to take it out of clothing after um, it dries, but I can't say I really tried any of them specifically to give you suggestions on that. So for this top edge here, I'm just going to kind of get in a layer and this, I don't care as much what it looks like. Um, so just kind of get some of that color on there. Make sure that it's not just that gold color. And I do want to preserve just a little bit of the gold here because that's going to kind of be my sky color. Just kind of that glowy light undertone. I haven't painted anything this large in quite a while, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, see how patient I am with it, because it definitely takes longer than some little, the little sketchbook paintings that I've been doing. Um, my goal is to have this done in three hours, so we'll see how long it takes. I will definitely be speed and already have but be speeding up parts of this because i know nobody wants to sit here and watch me paint for three hours or very few people so we'll be speeding it up in a lot of parts probably most of it and then we are gonna have some leaves on the path some in the front here and right here there's like a bank and this layer isn't really creating that this is just getting a first layer of color in I can always go back in and add in more yellows if I want to so let's get some kind of orange colors so I do have two different colors of red I have a cooler red and a warmer red and then to make this kind of brownish orange color I'm using yellow or yellow ochre my warmer red and a bit of the yellow as well and then we're just gonna go ahead and kind of tap this in as well um, and now I am kind of thinking about okay I want to preserve the lightness here um, and just tap in some of this darker yellow around different spots and this is going to be a little bit I don't know if impressionistic is the right word but it's I'm not going for like detailed trees by any means it's just going to be the impression of trees and who knows I might completely hate it at the end and that's fine 
Yeah, I do. I've definitely had paintings that I've done that I'm like, meh, really not a fan. Actually, one of my least favorite paintings that I've done, I was trying to go for kind of a similar style to this, and I really didn't like how it turned out. It was a uh, like Irish path with sheep. Um, the sheep were only were my only like part that I actually liked. I liked how the sheep turned out, but otherwise I didn't like it. But my best friend, she really liked it and she wanted it and it's in her living room. So, you know, to each their own style. And so even if you create something that maybe you don't love, somebody else might like it and there's still value in it. So just always know that even if you don't create something that you necessarily like, it can still have value for just the process of creating it and even possibly you know somebody that you love might might like it so create anyway even if you aren't convinced that you're gonna like the finished product now let's get into some greens and this green that I have is like a really, really cool green. So we're definitely going to warm that up and make it a little bit more of a brownish green. Here's where we start getting into some of the like, ooh, no, it needs to be more brown. Anyway, where we get into some of the darks and kind of tapping in this evergreen tree. And you can see it like, because I do water down the paints, it's not completely opaque. If I want it more opaque, I can go in with another layer later, which I might do. Um, but also there is something that is interesting about seeing the underneath layers as well. I'm just trying to get some asymmetry to this tree because trees are not symmetrical by any means and I'm just gonna kind of think about where I want the bottom of this tree to end get that in so I'll go back and put in branches later Let's get a little bit of a cooler green, but very deep and dark, slightly cooler. Still don't want it to be really cool. Okay, and then there's some darker bushes or something back here that are green. There's some green kind of down in here. That's kind of a little less defined. It's lower in there. And kind of, again, there's this bank here. It's a bridge. It's going over something, but that something is not water. It doesn't appear. But we'll just kind of smooth that out a little bit. And then make a little bit of a looser wash here and tap in a little bit of that green back here. And I want it to be pretty transparent and um, kind of match the value of this yellow. So I don't want it to be the same intensity as this because it's more background stuff and the background would not be as intense as the things in the mid and the foreground. So just again, try to match that value. Preserving the yellow, the light, colors there. I mean, I can always go back in and add light values again because it is pretty opaque medium, but 
it wouldn't have the same quality of this transparency where you can see the underlayer. So by kind of preserving that, we um, save that quality of lightness. And I just kind of want to get some greens in here. Give it some variety and some of them are kind of, I'm blending them together a little bit here. So making it almost a brownish color. So like up in here, I don't want this light lightest color showing here. So I'm just going to kind of cover all of that and get a little bit more opaque paint again to try to match the value of this orange a little bit. Let's go in here. Same thing. Just a bit more of an opaque paint. Okay, so now just making a little bit of brown to get some darker darks in here. Still not super dark, pretty transparent, but just to tap in for some variety. And I'm not worrying about branches or anything yet, just trying to get some depth. And then over here, some just darkness underneath that bridge and down in whatever this ravine holds. It's just kind of indistinct. Okay, let's get some reds in and we don't want it to be too powerful of a red, too bright of a red, so it's going to lean toward brown by mixing it with that brown that I just made and some green. And then we're just going to tap some of that in and we're going to start here where some leaves have fallen and I really am happy with that color. It's like, I don't know, I have boy colors. It's a dark red, maybe like burgundy or maroon. I don't know, burgundy or maroon maybe, but I'm happy with the color. And then I'm just going to kind of tap it in. I kind of like, at least for right now, I like the effect, the texture that just dabbing my brush like this is making. Um, I don't know. It looks like little spiky leaves a little bit, sort of. And then let's just dab in. A little bit of green and they're gonna mix together because it's all wet and that's okay just make it a brownish color which is very fall and then we're just gonna dab a little bit of this color into the areas around it so that it's not this distinct like oh there's orange leaves over here on the side and red leaves on the path because that doesn't make sense so we'll just dab some of that color here okay just put in some brownish green back here for some bushes. Okay, now we're going for some darks up here. Again, we just need to add a little bit of contrast because right now it's all looking just very mm, blah because we don't have any darks. Okay, I am going to take a little break, let it dry, and then come back, paint the barn and the foreground. There's some leaves, and then I have to do all the branches and trunk, tree trunks too. So that's where I am. Let's come back and do some tree trunks. So I gotta mix up a brown. So we're just gonna start with red and green little bit of yellow ochre. It's kind of a little bit too gray. So 
put in some of my cooler red and we have a nice reddish brown color let's add a little bit more yellow ochre to make it a more yellow brown i did like that color it just didn't quite fit the rest of the painting and now we're going to paint in some tree trunks so just because i have a lot of paint on my brush i'm going to start more foreground here and i have this tree here so let's put in that tree trunk get a little bit thick and jaggedy and then just use the tip of the brush to continue a little bit of that color up and you're just going to kind of see it peeking through certain places and then of the same thing just see it peeking through for some branches yeah I'm gonna have to use a smaller brush for that I was hoping that that tip of that brush would be enough but I just have so much this paint and stuff in this brush it's so fat right now I'll just get a smaller brush later just kind of get a little bit more shape to the bottom there okay and then we also have a very defined one over here kind of like so and i'll come in and put some more leaves and stuff over it in a minute and this one pretty much goes all the way up and then give it a little bit well a lot less and a little bit more watery of a mixture to put in some of the more background tree branches and these ones can be just a little bit sparse it's mostly just to add texture more than anything I'm not really gonna notice these as much as distinctly and then you know up closer to the front they'd be a little bit bigger so these ones are a little bit bigger and then they're working their way back and these are a little bit darker and that one's a little bit lighter value and then kind of just that same idea over here this one's my foreground kind of most focus most interest on that one and then we just get some other branches here and then we need a more watery mixture so that it's that lighter value for in here as well let me get a smaller brush here and less paint so this is still wet so I can just dab that and lift it back up and then just go in with a smaller brush here so the same thing here on this side just a light very very light touch here here my dog's walking around it's starting to get a little bit colder outside so they get to stay inside longer and more of the day it's only a little annoying when they're making noise like that but it's okay you can see here i'm just like barely touching to get the hint of some and some of them i don't love or they're too just a little too dark so just kind of wipe them out because they're still wet I think some more needs to happen up here and these are a little bit more mid-ground so again we want to match the value of the leaves so they're not going to be really big and bold but they are going to be much darker than these background ones darker value okay now i think that that helps kind of bring it to a foresty scene versus just a bunch of dots 
right? So just adding in a little bit of suggestion of tree trunks really helps. And you can see it doesn't have to be like perfect or fancy or beautiful. I'm just putting lines in. And then here I'm just kind of making sure it's more opaque paint. And just getting a little bit of like a tree root coming out shape down here. Now, I do want to add a little bit of branches to this tree. So I'm going to take that same small brush that I was just using and just use the very tip to add in some very minimal branches. It's not a lot and you're gonna see them maybe a little bit more at the top than at the bottom. And they're not symmetrical. Some of them are gonna come more out forward, some out to the side, and then some you might see more at the ends of the branches. Others you might see more in the middle, just get some variety. Doesn't matter that much. It's just to add a little bit more depth and dimension to the tree. Now, let's start on the covered bridge. And this is the focal point, obviously. And it's going to be the hardest, <laughs> in my opinion. So start by mixing up the colors. So the roof is like a warm brown with some orange kind of undertones to it. So I'll mix up like a really orangey brown and then I have a less orange brown. And then like in here, there's like a highlight and some leaves on the roof. I don't really know how I'm gonna do that yet, but we'll see. So let's start with just getting in some color. Here's some of that orangey brown. And then we're just gonna get some texture by pulling the brush down a little bit. Now onto the kind of road part of it, and it's a little bit more gray. It's kind of a warm gray. So we'll get a little bit of a brown, black, and white, and then just paint that in. <clears throat> One thing that I do notice, and I don't know if it's just because my paints are lower quality, like we already talked about, but they do kind of get, like they go through this stage where they're wet, and then they're like tacky and sticky, and then they go to the like dry stage, I guess. So um, where I kind of get myself in trouble sometimes is by painting on it while it's in that tacky stage because it kind of sticks to the brush. And then instead of like painting smoothly, it drags some of that paint out and really leaves kind of intense brush marks that don't necessarily mean to have. So sometimes I just need to be a little bit more patient and let it dry fully. Now acrylic paints dry fast so it doesn't really take that long it's just I'm impatient and so even though it doesn't take very long I still go too fast sometimes or start the next layer too soon. So like here I really need to let that path dry before I start working more on it. Instead I'm gonna try to fix it while it's wet which I just told you I shouldn't do so you know, I don't do a good job following my own advice. Okay, let's let that dry. Let's come back up and try to make shingles. Now, a kind of gray, kind of brown. I'm going in with a smaller brush and doing these ones here. I'm just trying to get general shape in. It's, I have no impression that this is going to be a realistic painting. That's not the goal. So just trying to get general shape of these. I guess they're shingles. That's what I'm calling them. I don't know if they actually are, but that's what I'm calling them. So they're just kind of rectangles. And then you do kind of see a little bit of this roof line going back, but you can't really tell what's going on with it. So I'll just do general impression that 
the front stops right there and then it goes back from there. And then kind of the same on the side here. Let's get a general impression that there's something else. There's some depth there and it's going back a little bit. And then we can get some darks in here going up. I'm gonna make it look like some weathered wood. This a little bit more opaque and then same here just a little bit more opaque alrighty now this is pretty orange and it can be but I want to add the darks in there too I need to add a line here to really define where this ends and the background begins. Now, same idea for the roof here. So, we're gonna do the top here. There is the roof, and now, we have to get that like shingly look. So I think I'm gonna go for more loose here and get just a light, lighter wash of the roof color on. And then by doing this, that will also, I can leave some areas less dense um, to look like the highlighted areas. Now let's add in just a little bit of paint here where it's a little bit darker and then just add some various brush marks to give it some texture. Okay, now for these front shingly thingies. We kind of got these ones going this direction. I'm going to turn this just to make the angle of my arm easier so my arm doesn't get too tired because it's starting to holding it out funny. I can get just a little bit more of this orange color in, a bit of black, just to get some variety. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. Now, yeah, just add a little bit of gray here. Where that little window is, because it's not going to be the same color as the background sky just a little bit of reflection-y color. So we're gonna mix up a red and I'm gonna mix my two reds here because I want it to be a more medium red, not super orange. So I don't just want my, I think it's like cadmium red, I don't know. It just says primary red, but it's like an orangey red. And this one, my darker red is a little bit more purpley. And this is gonna be really bold, but we're just gonna go for it. We need to make a shadow shade for the red. So we'll make it just a little bit darker. And back here is gonna be more of a shadowy red. And under this eave is gonna be shadowy. And then as we come down, it's gonna get to be the brighter red. It's not as shadowy. And the windows over here are really just gonna look more um, black just because all we're seeing is the frames so I don't need to preserve those areas really because I'm just gonna paint over them. I'm still trying to preserve them but just because it makes it easier for me to see where they are but I don't have to. Back here there's um, some red posts but they're super super shadowed so you can't really tell that they're red really. We're gonna do a more brown. And then 
up here in the front there, a little bit more of a grayish red. Now I need to darken up the inside of my barn so that it looks truly like it's more shadowed because right now it's like the same color as the outside and that's, or the same value and that's not gonna make it look like it has that depth and that shadow. Okay and then kind of the same thing here and it's also I mean it's super dark too it's nearly black as well, especially toward the back. And toward the front, it gets a little bit lighter, but not much. So, I mean, I definitely started too brown and too light, but by doing it that way, I do build up some layers and you can see a little bit of the brown underneath this next layer that I'm doing. So I'm still, you know, darkening it. That looks better. Now I need to go in and add some kind of the foreground foliage and some foliage in front of the tree here and a little bit in front of the barn too just to make it look like it's all integrated together and not just like this barn plopped down on top of my background. So we're gonna mix up a little bit of that kind of gold foliage color that we had initially. Try to get a fairly similar color. It's not going to be exact, but it'll be similar. And then we can just get some foliage here and it's kind of coming in front of the tree. So there's some various spots where it, maybe this tree that this foliage is coming from you can't actually see because it's off to the side more but we'll just dab in some of these colors and then again kind of put some in front of the barn here too so that it doesn't look like the barn is just sitting on a background or sitting in front of a background it's actually part of this landscape and then kind of add in just a little bit of this green color over here because it's feeling a little too brown. And under here, I didn't get all the way, so let's mix together some brownish green and just tap some of that in. And let's add just a little bit more green to my evergreen tree here. So I'm just kind of randomly tapping it in, not really focusing on where I'm putting it at all, but just to kind of add some dimension, some depth to it. And this tree could be going a little bit in front as well. Um, 
In the photo, it's not. It's kind of very defined off to the side, like very distinctly that it's not going in front, but I kind of like it better going in front a little bit. Again, it just kind of incorporates that barn a little bit more into the scenery. Or not barn, covered bridge. I think that's looking much better. Let's get some leaves down here in the foreground. I'm kind of going up onto the bridge a little bit. This is going to be too big to splatter with. I will end up with gigantic splatters, so let's get a smaller brush and just splatter in some of that yellow just to make it look like maybe there's some leaves that went into the um, covered bridge. And we'll just splatter some paint in front too to have that similar texture. And then I'm going to do the same thing kind of up here on the roof to make it look like there are some leaves up there and just add a little bit of texture. Now I need to add the leaves that are coming down from the top. These I kind of want to be nice big leaves so I'm using this really large brush and just kind of tap, press down, getting overlap in various shapes. And again, you know, this is kind of the spot where it's like, oh, I'm almost done, and now I'm adding something that's large and prominent to the foreground. Is it gonna just completely ruin it? And the answer is maybe. It's possible, right? Who knows? But it's not finished without this, in my opinion, because there's nothing really foreground where you can see that things are happening and um, there's more depth. So we're just going to add it and hope for the best. Now, final step to make it complete with being fall, we're gonna add some pumpkins. So mix up an orange here and basically paint some funky circles. Now, just need to add some stems and some shadows. So, let me get a shadowy color here. So, just gonna loosen up some black and basically just tap it under to make it look like there's a shadow. Now, I just need to add some stems and they're gonna be a dark brown. Now, on these pumpkins, I do want to add just a tiny bit of detail to separate the sections. So I'm just going to add like a highlight almost here and see what happens. And if I don't like it, I won't do it to the other ones, but I think that that worked pretty well. So let's go ahead and do it to the other ones here. Just kind of defining the sections a little bit. Okay, we're going to call that good. All right, so here is that completed painting. And overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I like the pumpkins in the front and how they really kind of anchor the, the covered bridge. I kept calling it a barn. I don't know, it's red. 
it's a covered bridge. It's not a barn. I know that. I did keep saying barn in the video though, but I like how it anchors it to kind of the road and the landscape. And I do like how the foreground leaves turned out up here. Um, they're just much more defined, much larger, and you can see some of the veins in them. And then everything else is more kind of abstract and subtle. I also like how um, this area looks really bright and glowy and um, it just, I don't know, it, it gives that kind of atmospheric effect in the background. So thank you so much for watching today. I'm going to put that right back there for now. <laughs> thank you so much for watching my video today. I really did enjoy painting this. The total painting time was two hours and 54 minutes. Um, so it was right about that three hour mark that I was expecting. If you made it this far in the video, you definitely should go ahead and subscribe to my channel because you know, you put in about an hour of your time. So definitely subscribe, like the video and check out more of my content. Have an awesome day.